Well, good morning, everybody. Kenny here. Uh, welcome to another week, and welcome to another daily office. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about Col Colossians 3, verses 1 through 17. This is a part of the letter to the Colossians where Paul talks about the difference between our old life and our new life, our old self and our new self, and what it looks like to live according to the, the patterns and principles and practices of the old life versus the new. So that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to read it now. I'll have a few more things to say, and then we can pray. Again, this is Colossians 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so also you must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. You know, I was reading in Colossians this morning, and what really struck me about this chapter, or this, this passage, looking at the old self versus the new self, is just how beset we are by opportunities to trend back toward the old self. I'm thinking specifically of the internet. I'm thinking specifically of social media. It's grieved me to see the way we treat each other online. This isn't a new thing. This has been going on for a long, long time. It's something about the anonymity of sitting behind a computer screen. Uh, it allows us to play to our baser instincts. We can lash out at people. We can be angry at them. We can be wrathful. We can even slander people with our words without really having the accountability that would come when we're sitting face to face with a person. I can't speak angry words to you if we're sitting in front of each other because you're going to push back. And more importantly, because I am face to face with your humanity. And I know I can't disrespect you in that way. But social media takes away all of that sort of intrinsic accountability. It makes it so much easier for us to treat people in ways that we would never consider treating them if we were in person. It's so easy to act like the old self. When Paul is telling us, really the Holy Spirit is telling us, to be who we are in Christ. To put on these virtues like compassion and kindness and humility and meekness and patience. To bear with one another. To forgive one another to put on love and live in perfect harmony. 
These are the things that God wants us to do as believers in Christ, even online, when, it, when we don't have the accountability of our brothers and sisters around us to really hold us to it. So my encouragement today for all of us would be to be who you are. Be the new person in Christ. Let your humility and your meekness and your patience with people be a beacon of light to everyone you interact with. Normally I'd be encouraging that in person, the people you see at work, the people you see on your street, in the store, and so on. But right now we're all a little more online than we were before. So even there, especially there, let's remember that we are talking about human beings. We are talking to human beings. And let's bring a bit of our redeemed humanity to those conversations. All right, I'm going to pray for us now. As always, I'd encourage you, share your prayer requests in the comments. Okay, let's pray. Father, we have indeed been raised with Christ. Help us then to seek the things that are above where he is seated at your right hand. Help us to set our minds on you. Help us to set our mind on heavenly things and not the baser things of this world. Lord, we rejoice that our old self has died and our new self is hidden with you in Christ. And we look forward to the day when he will appear in glory and we will appear with him in glory. Lord, as we anticipate that heavenly reality, as we anticipate the new heavens, the new earth, and the consummation of your new creation, Lord, help us to put to death what is earthly within us. Help us to put to death all the vestiges of the old man or the old woman that dwell within. Lord, may we not be sexually immoral or impure. May we not be driven by our passions and our evil desires and our covetousness. May we worship you alone and not allow the, the many idols produced by our hearts to seek to dethrone you. Help us to put away our anger and our wrath and our malice, and our slander and our obscene talk. Lord, help us not to speak falsities of other people. Help us not to perpetuate falsehood. Help us to be people of truth and light. Help us to seek the truth. Help us to challenge ourselves and one another not to speak poorly of others. And if we must speak hard truths to ensure that they are indeed truths, and then we're not slandering people, spreading false reports and conspiracy theories, and all these things which beset us now. Lord, help us not to lie to one another, but to be truth speakers and truth seekers. In this way, Lord, we pray that you would help us to live into the new self. Lord, because we are in you, there is a new creation, and we are indeed part of it. It doesn't matter who we are, Greek or Jew, pagan or Gentile, black or white, Chinese or American. If we are in you, then you are in us. Christ is all and in all. May we then live as those chosen people, Lord, holy and beloved. Would you give us compassion and kindness and humility and meekness and patience? Would you help us to bear one another even when we are not in the mood to do so? Would you help us to forgive one another even as you have forgiven us in Christ? And above all, would you help us to put on love, which binds all things together and works perfect humanity? harmony. May we be people marked by the peace of Christ which rules our hearts, the peace which calls us to unity in the body. May we be thankful. May the word of Christ dwell in us richly, and may we teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. May we sing over one another and to one another, and in all things be thankful to God. May we not allow ourselves to fall into falsehood. May we not allow one another to stray toward the darkness. May we not allow one another to live according to the flesh and the pattern of the old life and its practices, Lord, but would you help us lovingly and graciously call one another to the new life you have given us in Christ. Lord, may you help us to be those people in our homes, 
out on our streets, and yes, on the internet. Lord, as we pray this morning, we pray for our hearts. Times like these can harden us, deaden us, in ways that are often imperceptible. So we need you, Lord. We need your grace. We need your Holy Spirit to come into our hearts, into our minds, and let us know what's going on with us. As we pray this morning, I want to lift up the people in our congregation that have been on my heart. Think of Pam Gray, her son-in-law, her daughter, her granddaughter. Thank you for the healing you have worked so far, the protection you have provided. Pray that you continue to do so. And I pray especially for Chuck and Maggie and Micah that this would be a moment when they could look to you, acknowledge you, know that you are the great I am. Pray for Suzanne Foreman and her mom and the, loss in, in the, in the passing of Suzanne's dad. Lord, for the grief, the many mixed emotions, I just lift them up to your care. I pray that you would draw near. I pray that you would comfort them. I pray that you'd bring them peace. I see Doug's prayer request, Lord, and it circles us back to what we've been talking about. The internet is a wonderful gift, but with so many wonderful gifts, we can easily twist it make it something that it wasn't intended to be. We are reliant upon your grace to keep us in line with the new and away from the old. So help him, help me, help all of us to avoid situations online and platforms online that are not conducive to our spiritual health. Help us to go there and use them for what they're worth in the right ways but Lord, as we sense in ourselves our hearts straying, or we're getting angry, or we're getting wrathful, or we're tempted to slander others, Lord, help us to just close up the computer and move on to something else. To so maybe open our Bibles and to seek you. And then, indeed, that is what Ellen prayed for as well. That maybe we'd stay off the internet a little bit and spend more time in your word. Spend more time outside to go for a walk, to commune with you in nature, to hear you, to listen for your still small voice. We pray that for this season, Lord, that while we are surrounded by noise, we are surrounded by bickering in so many ways. And when we go online, it seems that's the majority of what we find there. Pray that we would tune out the cacophony and we would hear the beautiful harmony that you have written in your word and in your world. Help us, Lord, to find you there. We thank you for your promises. We thank you that you are our Father, and we are your sons and daughters. Help us now to live like it, to live like the new people you have made us in Christ, to love one another, to live in peace and in harmony. We pray all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining me this morning. I know this is a little counter to what I was just saying, but do come back to Facebook tomorrow at 10 a.m. Casey will be with you. We'll be looking forward to seeing you then. God bless.